Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's Accelerate Your Performance podcast. I'm your host, Janet Pilcher. Thank you for tuning into our show today. This podcast is all about leadership, and I don't mean leadership as a position. It's about how we can all see great leadership in action so that we can all be leaders in our organizations. And the focus of leadership is connected to the nine principles framework highlighted in my new book, Hardwiring Excellence in Education. Let's dive into today's episode. I'm pleased to introduce you to our guest, Al Vitri. Al serves as the Agency Administrator at Cooperative Educational Service Agency 9, or CESA 9, in Tomahawk, Wisconsin. There are 12 CESAs in the state of Wisconsin. CESA 9 services over 34,000 students, covers 5,669 square miles, and is made up of 22 school districts. Prior to his current role as agency administrator, Al served for nine years as Director of Continuous School Improvement Services for CESA 9. Al spent 17 years teaching at Horace Mann Middle School in Wausau, Wisconsin. During that time, he served as the Social Studies Department Chair and Interdisciplinary Team Leader and also coach wrestling, baseball, and track and field. From there, he transitioned into administration and became an associate principal in charge of curriculum instruction and assessment at Horace Mann. There, he served two years before transitioning to CESA 9. CESA 9 has partnered with Studer Education since 2014. Today, we'll talk with Al about his success using surveys as part of his team's improvement work, his intentional approach to communication, and how he's built an outstanding workplace culture. I'm so glad to have Al on our show today. So it's with great pleasure that I welcome Al to our show today. Al, welcome. Thank you so much, Dr. Pilcher. It's so awesome to be part of this program today. It's I look forward to the conversation and learning more about what you're doing. We've been connected uh, to your organization for quite some time. So It's just great to have you as a partner in this process with us. So let's start, if you would, just tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, what led you to get into the field of education. That sounds great. And thank you for the partnership. It's been uh, so rewarding for us to work with all of you. Um, But yeah, so I guess I'll start by saying, you know, teaching is kind of a family business uh, for (laughs) for myself and my family. So my, my grandmother, my father. Uh, my two brothers, my sister, my wife, my sister-in-law, um, all teachers. Wow. And I think my journey, uh, you know, as you start with the family, like I'm not doing what everybody else does. So I was going to do something <laughs> different. Uh, I started actually thinking about pre-law and and uh, that route. And then actually I took an education class and was able to go out and work with some fifth graders for some public kind of sub- service uh, requirement for one of my classes and I just fell in love with the idea of working with kids and and those kinds of things. So I then went into education, uh, became an eighth grade teacher uh, for 17 years in a middle school. Got to love those eighth graders, middle school teachers out you there. And leaders, way to go. Uh, it, it loved every day of it. Uh, mm-hmm. And I said eighth grade is it was just such a great um, time to work with students. And then uh, basically what happened from there is I was an interdisciplinary team leader um, in a building of about 800 students, then also became a department chair for social studies and had an opportunity from one of our leaders in the district. Uh, I actually went to the, in the Wausau School District is where I was teaching uh, to get involved with curriculum and the standards movement that we all, some of us remember. Okay. So I started working with, with that and got introduced to, you know, understanding by design and, and trying to figure out how we really focus on what's best for kids and what's the most important learning that we can do with them. Found my passion with that. So then I decided after 17 years of teaching, I was going to go into administration and I was in the, also in the middle school uh, setting sixth, seventh, eighth grade with, I guess, about 800 students. Uh, and I was actually the administrator in charge of curriculum instruction and assessment. And uh, it was just a, a great opportunity to see how hard our, our educators work uh, mm-hmm. in the great things they do every day and be a different leader that way. And then actually, uh, former boss here at, at CESA 9, Dr. Karen Wendorf Helt, who is now retired, yes. uh, gave, you know, said, hey, Al, we have an opening at CESA 9, and it's a new position, and it's school improvement services. So I was able to take that position, uh, and I was in that position for nine years. And now I have been, uh, when Karen retired, I was able, to, very fortunate to yeah. continue in my journey of working at CESA 9, which uh, I absolutely love every day. And now I've been an agency administrator here at CESA 9 for two years. 
So um, well, kind of a cool uh, thing, Janet, is when I started, uh, it was just me in the Department of School Improvement Services. Yeah. Uh, and now after uh, nine years, we have grown that department to 10 um, oh, individuals gosh. working well, with districts yeah. and have just hired some amazing staff. So that's kind of my journey. And it's kind of yeah. uh, just, you know, it's kind of great how individual moments in life can can change your trajectory of your career and what you what you believe in. Yeah, and I do think that's, you know, that's the way it works. I mean, we just kind of, as we're doing the work that we love to do, and we, uh, you know, we're good at it, like you have been, then, you know, those leadership opportunities really open up. But that's a great story for others who are looking at, you know, how do you move up? I always tell people, you just, you're passionate about what you do, you do really good work, and doors will open for you in particular ways, right? Usually, if you plot it out in a particular way, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> yeah, know, absolutely. It's, yeah. You know, it's, <laughs> it's allowing for that evolutionary process to occur, just do do the right work and do the right things. And so true. We also talk to kids about taking risks, you know, as educators and as leaders, and we do the same things and it's not always planned, like you said, and uh, mm -hmm. it, sometimes getting outside of your comfort zone uh, mm -hmm. is is hard, but it's also the right thing to do for you and for your journey. So yeah, I would agree. Yeah, that's that's a that's a great story and I uh, have loved working with Karen over the years too. So again, just the the long connection with um, with CISA 9 and the great work that you, it, and it speaks to it. The reason you're able to grow the department is because you all have done such great work and it merits that growth. You know, so, and, and part of that has been uh, just your working with us and, you know, looking at the nine principles and really hardwiring some of those behaviors aligned to the tactics. You've used surveys, you're a service provider, you know, so you've used um, the district surveys, your employee engagement survey, you know, you're performing at some of our highest levels, Al, at the, you know, ni our 95th percentile on your district services, uh, 99th percentile with your engagement work. So tell us a little bit about that work and what your team has done to achieve that success. So it's it's a great story behind those numbers, I'm sure. It is. We're, and we're so proud of that. And I think when I say we, I mean our districts as well. We serve, we work with 22 school districts in at CISA 9. Uh, over 34,000 students. You know, it's really based on relationships and trust. And I, I think that is the the foundation of who we are and what we do. And I think working with our districts, it's just, uh, it's, it's, a, it's just humbling to work with great leaders and great teachers. But I think the one thing that's important is we, we, we can't make assumptions about what people think you should be doing or how you're doing. And sometimes we have individual perceptions that we feel. Um, and sometimes those are correct, right? But Surveys provide you the data that really builds that solid foundation of how are we doing, uh, what's working well, what are areas of improvement, and I think strong culture and you know those kinds of things with the surveys it starts with voice and you know I always I always say that like we have to be very responsive and you know I say we are what our districts need us to be. The surveys say hey you're knocking out of the park in the air of getting back to us, but we could do a little bit better here. And then we talk, we get deeper and then we round and we have conversations. So I think surveys really serve that well. And I think both externally, you know, and internally, there has to be a balance. What are people, you know, what are our districts saying about us and our services, how we do, and also how are our employees feeling? Uh, employee engagement is a huge part of that. And I think you have to balance that and it's built on trust, strong communication and data that takes away some of those personal feelings or assumptions that we say this is what we this is what we're hearing and seeing now how do we get better how do we grow i think that's really important part of it you're engaging in those conversations with your teams and your quote customers you know those people you serve right and that's probably what gets you to those defined improvement actions and and people see oh, oh you've listened to me now you're doing what we've said in a way that we understand and you're helping you know build that better service internally and externally is that right al absolutely absolutely and i think what it also does it's real time i always compare it to a formative and summative assessment right we have summative assessments that are very important but this allows us to look at things as we're hearing them and being responsive being responsive means many things right and the surveys allow us to say, what do our districts need right now? And what do they need in the future? And I, I think that's where, where CISAs in the state of, of Wisconsin are just play such a crucial role and, and ESAs in the nation in that. And we're built on relationships, you know, I yes. mean, because I always say this, like we sing for our supper, which means like if we're not <laughs> providing high quality services, 
we're not going to be around and we're not going to grow, but it's, I, I credit our districts uh, for also helping us in this journey. And it's a side-by-side, -side, uh, we're in this together mentality. And we always say with, with these, this data, you know, we, we just help. We're a support. We try to help people grow. And we also need to uh, inspire all the people we're working with and surveys help that they really do. So let's talk a little bit about those services. You've increased those services and obviously by the growth of your, you know, your area and with the number of people on your team, you've increased those services that you provide to the district. So I mean, talk a little bit about that. What are the services, how they expanded and, you know, kind of why has that occurred? Yeah, it, they have expanded greatly. I mean, this past year, I think we went, uh, we had over 13,000 um, people that were a part of our, you know, our workshops and things in the, in the prior year, we're at 9,000. So we saw a huge jump in those services. And I think it's a couple of things you have to hire exceptional people, of course, that have skills, but also we have to listen to the, of your stakeholders. And that's one of the things that we really focused on this past year is, you know, what are we doing that it's hitting the, the mark and what are our holes and services? Like, what are our districts saying to us that they need? And I think that's where the rounding conversations come in, right, uh, right. with that. So I, I think what we've tried to do is, for example, we know literacy is a really important thing, but I also know that we have to have real high quality people that do that. So our literacy services have increased uh, because of there's a need. We've also looked at different ways to be innovative. We don't have substitute teachers you know, available anymore. It's just, we can't, it's hard to find. Yeah. And we, so what we do, we have to shift your model to going out, not people coming to you. We go out to, to them. So mm -hmm. I, I think that's, that's where it is. And I think one of the things that why we've grown the services, districts are using us more because it's built around those things, Janet, that we mentioned earlier. It's built yeah. on trust, knowing you're going to have high quality services and high quality staff, but also we're in this together mentality. Mm -hmm. And I, I think we don't judge, you know, where you are or what we just try to, like, how do we, how do we celebrate with you what's going well and how do we help you get better? And yeah. I think if you have that mentality, you will grow your services. Yeah, it's so good. It's kind of the inside out approach to what, you know, sometimes we've been accustomed to historically. And I, what I mean by that is sometimes historically centered that said, here are the services we provide, pick them, <laughs> right? you know, versus let's see what your need is. Let's talk to you, understand what your needs are and let us help serve those needs by the way we define what we do. That's the standard probably that we should live to as service providers, right? I think about the service centers that I've been connected with all over through the decade, sometimes running those through university, Al. You know, that's not always been what how we've thought of about it, right? I think it right. is that inside out approach. It is. And I think the other part of this too is it's the people. Like we have mm -hmm. innovation and ideas of the staff on hand. And I think when you try to you try to build capacity in everyone and we have a lot of learning that takes place and they're working extremely hard and they have great ideas because they're working with the teachers every day in the classroom and yes. say, hey, we need to do something different. And our staff has been so great with that. And the other thing is every person matters. Everyone has to feel a part of something that's bigger than just them. Yes. And I think when you do that, and all of our, all the people here that work, we have 59 staff right now that and we've grown that number from, it was like 43, you know, a few years ago. So I think having that mentality too, we're all hands on deck, never saying it's not my job. It's just helping each other. And I think that's how you grow it. And also having that really support and that really good connection with your districts and your leaders and your teachers to do what's best for kids. Yeah, uh, it's, it's what guides you. Yeah, that's so good. As we're thinking about, we're talking kind of at that grassroots level, and then you run an organization. So let's kind of pull it back up for a few minutes. And, you know, as I've talked to Casey, Casey really sings your praises in terms of the work that you're doing. And she's talking, talks about your team strategic planning process that, you know, you've been very thoughtful about the communication with your team about the process and offered opportunities again for them to provide feedback. So talk about like from an organizational standpoint and leading at, at what our priorities are in the organization, you know, how have you been, been intentional about including your team in those conversations? Yeah, it's been awesome work with Casey. Uh, her and I had a chance to, you know, in my first year as agent's administrator, she, you know, she was a, my coach and yeah, I mean, I think we say this a lot and I'm not sure exactly what it is, but you know, to, you got to start time and go slow to move fast mm -hmm. uh, mentality. And I think we've, been very intentional here about getting uh, input voice uh, to make sure that when we get to our end product, uh, we have something that we feel really good about and everyone owns. It's not Al's plan, right? It, it's ours. And I think also our districts are a part of that. And I mean, we included legislators, we included school board members, we included our Department of Public Instruction folks in our listening sessions. 
gather that data. Our staff, uh, we met numerous times to gather input about what the questions that we asked are, you know, what are we doing well? What things can we get better at? What are we missing? You know, the, those conversations. And I think when you get there, what I found is it's the journey. The yeah. scorecard is fantastic uh, that we've created now, but it was the journey to get there and the intentional communication around what we're trying to do as an agency and having voice, having discussions, listening. It's easier if I just did it myself, right? I can just do <laughs> things and get very fast. But, you know, it, it's just really, really important to make sure you have a backwards map where you want to be and how do you get there and then step-by-step -step process. So working with Casey, having a coach like that to go through the process, it's just been really rewarding. And our, our scorecard, I just, I rolled it out at our beginning of the year staff meeting where everybody together. It's just like, it's such a great feeling, Janet, because like everybody like, yeah, this is, yeah, this is us. Yeah. And I was just thinking that, you know, as you're looking at your strategic plan and your scorecard, people can see themselves in that, right? From those conversations. Like, I love what you just said. Yeah, this is us. Like, this yeah. isn't just this thing, you know, that we're, trying to build an accountability tool. It's a really about a tool that drives us to do the great work that we want to do and, you know, have the goals that are in front of us that are meaningful that we had input into. Yeah, you know, that's so important. And I want every, I wanted every person to feel that they could find a part of that. They can find who, how they fit into that. We have, you know, our pillars, exceptional people, trusting partnership, responsive services. Every one of us in season nine can mm. attach to, to those things and believe in it and be a part of it and set goals around it. And I think cascading is important when you should you plan. Everything I'm very intentional about is making sure that we're in alignment from, yeah. you know, the, the big picture down to the departments that we have down to the individual and the goal setting, it, it all lines up. And I think that just allows you to have a really good direction. And um, you can also speak your, you know, who we are to everyone. Uh, it's kind yeah. of like an elevator speech, right? Like if you got that's two right. minutes, who are you? <laughs> yeah, that's great. So we've talked a little bit about it, but the other thing that Casey talks about, and I love this term, you know, she talks about your organization's culture playbook and the consistency around that and we in, you know, how critical that is in your organization and how intentional that is. So as we kind of close today, you've talked really about being strategic and building your improvement focused approach with your outcomes that are there. And you've also talked about the significance of providing great service as a key and cornerstone to what you do and really building the engagement with your people. You know, what I've learned and we've all learned over the years is we can't do any of that if we don't have a great culture that allows us to be at our very best. So I'd love for you as we close with our last question today, really talk about what you mean by that culture playbook and how it's implemented and it's intentional with you. Yeah, it's it's our, it's our you know, so important to us. I mean, and we have three big parts of that, connecting with compassion passion, serving with integrity, and grow with intention. We have a playbook, and what are the plays of that playbook? And I think what we talk about a lot is every interaction matters. Every mm -hmm. interaction matters. And I think when you have a solid understanding of what that looks like, what does serve with integrity look like, feel like, how do we live that, right? Connecting with compassion. After we went through with, with COVID and all the things, compassion has never been more important for working with our, our educators, because uh, it's been hard. But they're they're resilient, and I think we need to connect with them and, and be compassionate and also help them grow with intention. So I, I think it has to be that every action matters. Every phone call, every conversation in the hallway, every interaction in the district, everything matters. And I think um, we I always say I'm, I'm old school. People will like laugh at me. I still keep the old little white notebooks full of notes and things like that. But I do believe that word of mouth is your best advertising many times and what people say and is how they feel, how you feel about something. I always, we always talk about this as a staff is we always want people to feel better when we leave uh, as a CSUN when we come in. And I think that culture and each other, I think it's hard though too, Jen. I think you have to have courageous conversations around that. Yeah. We can talk that, but you also have to be willing to say, how do you own the culture playbook you're in your own, we call it your own 20 square feet. Right. How do you own your 20 square feet of the culture and how are you handling not only the good things, but the challenging things? And that's growing capacity, which leads to really, really strong culture and believing in one another and trusting one another. So the culture is something we're super proud of and, and uh, our people really just live it. And that's why you get good people. You know, I mean, when you have opportunities to hire people and build your capacity, then you're getting some of the best people because they want to work in a place where there's a culture um, that really supports them and uh, supports the people that you work with each and every day. You know, you kind of started with the concept of building trust. Trust is such an important part of an organization and for leaders to be able to lead well. People are like, how do we build that trust? Like, uh, 
a lot of hard work, very intentional action. Yeah. <laughs> you know? and, yeah. uh, it's conceptually not difficult, but to be consistent, the execution of those tactical things that we do each and every day that are very intentional in the way that we really engage with our people and those we serve is, is that consistency is, is a must. And you do that. That's part of your DNA now. That would be my guess. It's not an option, I'm sure, within season right. on. That's just how it, we roll. It's how we roll. And I think you're right, so right. You nailed it. I mean, it's about people. It's about, and every, I think I round every morning, Janet, I walk in for the first half hour, I walk in, in our staff and I just make time for that. And when I, you know, if there's something that comes up, but I walk around and you learn about the people, you learn about who they are. And I think when you have those difficult conversations, you have relationships built on trust that will help lead you to good solutions. And I think that's important. I think we can't forget about the human side of leadership, um, how important that is. I mean, we can have the best laid plans on paper, but it's about the people that we have. And also something else I just want to mention with, with culture, the power of pressing pause mm -hmm. uh, is something that we talk a lot about with that as you know, there are times when you want to fire off an email, right? Or you're upset. And maybe it's based on an assumption that you're feeling that you think something is happening. Maybe it's not. And I think the power of pressing pause and talking through that, I always tell folks that culture, building a strong culture is not a sprint. It's a long distance race and you're going to have ups and downs, but you have to stay on the, the right course. And I, I think right. if you do that, you'll be okay. Yeah. That's right. So good, Al. This is uh, such a fun opportunity for me to get to talk to great leaders like you and just appreciate the work that you're doing and the partnership that we've had. So thank you so much for being with us today. Oh, thank you. It's an honor and a pleasure to be a part of this today. We're just, we love our, our work and our partnership and we just appreciate uh, you and everyone else, but also we appreciate all of our districts and teachers and leaders at, and, you know, in the season nine for, for helping us uh, in this journey together. So thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Al and his team at CESA 9 do excellent work. They service school districts in their region, and it makes a great contribution to the state as well. They are truly a high-performing service agency, and Al leads the team to provide great internal service to the people who he leads each and every day and the leaders leading the teams. And he also provides great service to the schools and school districts and the leaders who are connected to those districts as well as teachers and staff in the CESA 9 region. We're very appreciative for the contributions that Al and his team makes to our profession. We have a couple of weeks left of our virtual book club about leadership, and I'd love to invite you to join us. We're diving chapter by chapter into my new book, Hardwiring Excellence in Education, The Nine Principles Framework. This book club is for leaders who want to take their leadership to the next level. Our next book club meeting is at the end of October. We'll meet on Monday, October 30th at 2 p.m. Central. We'll dive deeper into the last principle, Principle nine, reward and recognize success. It's one of my favorites. It's important to do and a must have for all of what we do each and every day. It's a culture changer and I hope you'll join the conversation. To register, head to studereducation.com slash hardwiring excellent. If there's a question we can answer or a topic you'd like us to cover, we'd love to hear from you. You can email me at jpilcher at hcg.com. Or you can email our podcast producer, Mary Stackhouse Consoli at M Stackhouse, S-T-A-C-K-H-O-U-S-E at H-C-G dot com. We'd love to hear from you. As always, thank you for tuning in to this episode of Accelerate Your Performance. If you like this episode, we invite you to please leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. We value you and your feedback. Also, if today's topic resonated for you, please share this episode with a colleague or friend. I look forward to connecting with you next time as we continue to focus on the nine principles framework so that we can be our best at work. Have a great week.